you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini episode 28. We are going to talk about macros today, but before we do that, like, subscribe, comment, all of the fun things when it comes to supporting the channel and getting this out there, because we definitely need to do that, because we're going to talk about how influence makes a big difference today. That's one of our hot button topics. We have a few hot button topics because we just came out of the whole Arnold Classic weekend and there's some things to talk about um it was a crazy weekend but again our main topic today is we're going to go through macros and we're going to actually make this a little like mini series uh because we found that this is a huge huge question among everybody not just competitors but just lifestyle people in general everybody like nobody really comprehends what the whole you know, count your macros thing is. So we're going to break it down really into very basic terms so that you can start from the very beginning and go all the way through and understand it. Because I know for me, one of the reasons why I started working with Fit Body Fusion in the first place is because I wanted to learn how to do that. I've always done meal plans. I've always been the very strict, like, this is how you do it. Tilapia, asparagus, you know, rice, oatmeal, that's it. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I, I was like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I know that there's, a, there's this thing called macro counting, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> so let's figure it out. So that's really why I did that when I first started with, why I first started with Fit Body Fusion. Um, and it has completely changed my life. It has 100% completely changed my life. It's how I have completely, the way that I viewed food has completely changed, completely changed. So I don't know about you, but did, did you always come from, from a macros background or did you have meal plans in the past? No, um, my very first coach was very much like yours, you know, seven asparagus spears, yeah. uh, ground beef, X amount of rice, et cetera. And I never knew how they got to that point, you yeah. know, like where, where did they come up with these calculations? What was a macro? How do you come up with calories and things like that? And it really wasn't until I started tracking macros that I started to really learn what a macro was and what was in my food. And that was actually like the cool part. It's kind of empowering at that point that you can mm -hmm. kind of keep roll back and really understand, you know, what you're putting into your body. So again, wasn't until I joined Fit Body Fusion as well that I was exposed to this whole other side of the competition world and dieting and how it could be so much easier and better and more sustainable. So that yes. was my first experience as well. Yeah. And the biggest thing is what you just said, the sustainable part. You know what yeah. I mean? I think one of the hardest things that I had a problem with my first 10 years of competing was you go into contest prep and it's super strict all the time. And then you come out of contest prep and it's like free for all, just eat anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you go through a macros program, you can eat whatever you want all the time, even when you're in prep. Now, that's not to say to go freaking like people, it gets a bad rap as being the Pop Tart diet. You know what I mean? I don't know where that even came from, but it does. It gets a bad rap of being Pop Tarts. It's not. Yeah, it does. That. I use that too. I say that on Google <laughs> Calls. I'm like, just because you can put a Pop Tart in your plan doesn't mean you should. Where, what's right. the Pop Tart? Right. I don't know what it is. I think I, like it's so funny. I've, I've noticed this over the course of my competitive careers. Like there's always that hot button, like, bad food, food right yeah so yeah. i think when this stuff all started coming out it was pop tarts and then like it switched over to like cupcakes and then it's like now it's the big huge cookies you know yep. what i mean there's always something that they like they have backstage you know after the show that's what you first go to is the big huge you know co my cookie dealer cookies and yeah stuff like that you know so i think when this whole thing started catching on it was pop tarts was the thing pop tarts was the thing so that's why it became the pop tart diet. i love pop tarts i'll eat a pop tart every once in a while. They're, that's a jam they're very nostalgic <laughs> absolutely i love them too and you know nowadays they even have like the the legends food ones where they're like healthy i have some of those yeah, I, want yeah. them. I want them in <laughs> yeah. a bag once i forgot about those thanks for the yeah. reminder yeah, we had those. They were, uh, they actually sent us a bunch of stuff. They were one of our prize partners for Kitty's Cocking Stage, not this oh, cool. year, but the year before. So they sent us cool. a bunch of those stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I think that's where it kind of got its bad, it, the bad rap from is, is, is that, you know, but, and at the end of the day, like I tell people all the time, you can eat what you want as long as it has a, like a, a, a nutrient profile to it. Like I'm sitting here, I didn't get a chance to eat my full breakfast yet. I'm sitting here. I've actually got my bagel sitting right here. I eat a bagel. So I've been raising bagel every single day this is one of those um dave's killer bagels i used ones, to love the protein those. bagels yeah every day that's my thing like and i ate them all the way through prep i tell this to, to clients on calls too i'm like i literally ate them all the way up until peak week i said i just pulled them out on peak week because it's processed so right. you know it's as as it's close to being a whole food but it's not 
because it is processed. It's you know all that kind of stuff. So in the last the last week, I would go into you know cream of rice and things like that instead. But um, which is processed too. <laughs> But whatever, <laughs> it's a little less, a little less process. Um, Absolutely, <laughs> um, just a little bit easier to control. Because the other thing too, you got to remember that um, you know nutri- nutrition labels. If the food has gone through this kind of you know baking or whatever it might be, is not one hundred percent accurate. So um, those are all part of it too. Um, anyway, that was a little tangent. Uh, the the point being is that when you learn how to do this kind of stuff, it can completely change your relationship with food. You know, we've talked about this several times, even before I was in bodybuilding, I was modeling. So it was like, you just, you just starved yourself. That's what you did. You know, I don't know if you ever did the master cleanse, the master cleanse. Nope. Heard that? I heard, I've heard of it. Yes. It's the cayenne pepper and lemon <laughs> lemon juice and maple syrup. And you live on that for 12 days. And it, yeah, I did it several times. Wow. Yeah, it was not, it was, it was, it was not good. It was not good. I, but that, I that, would be walking around it. like a zombie and hangry. Um, just well, stay the funny out of my part way. About it, because I did it so many times. The funny part about it is if you made it through day three at that point, then everything was cool. Was cool. Like the first three days were rough. Hell, Cause you're, yeah. Li- yeah, you're literally living on maple syrup is basically what you're living on. Mm. <laughs> so bad. The things that we, the things that we thought were okay. Diet I mean, culture. Lot, yeah. And a lot of people still do. A lot of people still do think those things are okay. You know what I yeah. mean? And they're just not, they're just not, the cleanses and stuff like that do not think work. They don't, they just don't work. So anyway. I think some of that has to do too, you know, maybe you experience this as well. Like when I transferred from my first coach who was very heavy on the meal plans and like, you know, seven asparagus beers do, 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 to macros, mm-hmm. it almost felt wrong, right? It yes. almost felt you were cheating on a yes. diet. Um, so it's, it's that mental switch as well, where I see a lot of athletes, you know, that come from a coach like that, then they come to me or, you know, start doing this macro based diet. And they're like, this just doesn't seem, seem hard enough. Like, is, right. It, is it right? And it's like, it doesn't have to be that hard, right. especially right. in an off season setting. Now in a prep setting, you know, like, you know, you said you'll, you'll track macros all the way up into your, until, you know, peak week and whatnot. Some of my clients can, some of them don't, I have to put yeah. them on a meal plan eight weeks out or give them specific sources that they have to hit eight weeks out. Um, so uh, there's, there's different ways to approach that, but the ultimate goal is in an off season, like it gives you so much flexibility that it almost seems wrong, but it just so helps that mental component that got you there in the first place with that restricted diet. And that's exactly right. Because when I first started it, that's exactly how I felt. I was like, this can't be, this can't be it. Like this can't, like I've done this can't, for 10 years. This yeah. can't be it. Like, it just like, but you know, I also trusted the process. I knew I'm like, I know there's people that do it this way. There's gotta be, this, this has to work at the same time as wrong as it feels at first, because I have that happen a lot with my, my clients now. It's like, they're just, they just don't understand how this can be possible. You know what I mean? And I'm like, it's, it, trust me, it is. I said, there are no bad foods. I have to tell the girls every, every day. I'm like, you can eat that. It's okay. You know, you can have that. It's not, it's not against the rules. And that right there, as soon as you can make that flip in your brain of there's no bad foods, whew, makes such a huge difference. Such yeah. a huge difference in everything because all of a sudden you don't go into this restrict and binge, restrict and binge, restrict and binge kind of thing. Your brain doesn't hate you when you eat something bad or whatever it might be because there is nothing that's bad. You can have everything in moderation. You know, I go back to you know just being at the Arnold this past weekend. I brought the majority of my food with me, but I also grabbed food where when I had time to, you know, and and I still was able to fit my macros, you know, I still was able to eat, I was able to go out and have drinks at night with the girls, you know, those kinds of things. And it was fine. Now, again, you don't, (laughs) you don't want to do just like, okay, well, my alcohol, alcohol fits my macros. I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink all day long. You don't want to do that. You know what I mean? But it's okay to have everything in moderation. It is okay. So. I think about the long term mm-hmm. of the sport and what's what happens after, right? Like I always think about that. Like what's going to happen when I'm done with with bodybuilding and how am I going to continue a healthy lifestyle and mm-hmm. protect my brain through this process? You know, very yeah. similar to what we talked about last week, you know, longevity in this sport and then what happens years later and how do you mm-hmm. protect yourself? And I think macros gives you the best thing for your buck that way because when you're when we're currently in season, we get flexibility, we get choice, we get autonomy. But it also allows you back to that educational piece. There is so much power in understanding your foods, yes. quantities. And that's how after the stage you're going to transition to 
you know, after when you're done, you're going to st- continue to track macros and you're going to find maintenance, a sustainable lifestyle through macros. But then you're also noticing what four ounces of chicken looks like. And then That's you can right. start transferring to more intuitive eating um, yep. where you're kind of eyeballing your meals and sticking with good choices and things like that. And then you can just go to fully intuitive eating at some point. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to to do that when you don't really have the education of what's in your food, how much, et cetera. And that's where, you know, the, the weighing on the scale and, you know, looking at um, food labels and things like that to some people can be very restrictive or right. challenging in terms of the mental component. But to me, it's it's empowering because yeah. I'm learning, you know, Jamie says it all the time with macros. She doesn't want to give you the fish. She wants to teach you how to fish. Right. And that's mm-hmm. my, my, that's my attempt with my clients too, is that I want to teach you how to do this so that you could carry this for a lifetime, not that's just right. here age, not here in this moment when you're trying to drop weight, whatever it is, we're trying to develop good, healthy habits for a lifetime. Absolutely. And you know, that's, you know, I I work with a bunch of, you know, lifestyle clients now at this point too. And that's the hardest thing for them because again, they've gone, they've come from this diet culture of, they just don't even know how to put a meal together correctly, you know? Right. Yeah. And it's like, as soon as, and it is, it's very overwhelming at first. At first you're like, I don't even know how to do this. Like how am I, how's this supposed to work? But once you get into it, like I'll sit down and actually say, okay, let's take your foods that you normally eat. Let's portion them out and put them into a meal for you. And then, okay, here you go. Now you get your breakfast, now you get your lunch, now you get your dinner. All the same foods you were eating, we just portioned it correctly. We just put it together correctly for you so that you, you're getting a full rounded macro base for your, yes. for your actual meal today or actual intake today. And it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier when you eat that way. So yes. let me pull up the screen share and we're going to go through it really, like I said, basic, basic stuff. So for those of you that, it's those of you guys that have never done this before, you can get an idea of what we're looking at, what we're doing and everything like that. So it's the mystery of macros and what is a macro? So first question is what is a macro? So what, just, just give me your, your definition of what a macro is. Macros are macronutrients. So I say carbs, proteins, and fats. And then the one that we don't think about often is alcohol. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So here you go. That's right there. So it's, it's short for macronutrients. Macros are the larger source of nutrients in the body that, that the body needs to actually function. Macronutrients are a group of nutrients that provide your body with energy and the components that it needs to maintain its structure and functions. Just like Jordan said, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, um, and alcohol. Alcohol is its own macro. And again, we're going to go into that. But um, <clears throat> there's macro and there's micro. So there's micro as well, which we're not going to go into micro right now, but micro is smaller. So if you think of macro as being bigger, micro being smaller. When you're looking at those those nutrient uh, nutrition labels and things like that, you start getting into the, some of the micronutrients and the actual nutrition label. So just to start out and to figure it out first, we're focusing on the big picture, which is the macros, the carb- carbs, fats, and protein. So yeah. And again, um, we talked about macros are providing energy sources, right? So carbs and fats are um, energy sources. Protein is obviously for lean muscle. And the way I think about micronutrients is more of like vitamins, minerals. They're not necessarily giving energy to the body or helping us build. They're, they're complementary to the correct. systems that are going on in the body. Fiber, sodium, potassium, all those things. Um, and if yep. you are using my fitness pal, if you chat, tap the macros at the top of your diary, it will open up your micro page, which a lot of people don't realize is there. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's, uh, that's a good example too. Like there's just a lot of things in- like you said, in the, in the things that we, that we use every day, the, the my fitness pal that you don't even know are there that are, that are options. But again, and again, it's getting into the minutia of this stuff that we don't really need to focus on yet. We can, we can as we go along, but just big picture stuff is, is important. And also if you think about it this way, it's something that I tell people all the time too, when it comes to um, your diet, they always ask me things like, um, can I have protein shakes, protein powders, you know, uh, protein bars, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can. But those things are supplements, Right. Those are the things that go and supplement where you're missing stuff, your, you know, your, your vitamins, things like that. So your whole foods, your main foods are what you should be focusing on fully. And then those other things that come in underneath, those are your, those are your micro nutrients, right? Those are the things that come in supplement where you, where you, where you need more. If you need more protein in your diet, then you can throw in a protein powder. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So the macros, big picture, right? All right. So let's talk about carbs first. All carbs are evenly broken down into glucose eventually broken down to glucose, which is the main energy source for your body. In fact, a specific organ such as your brain need glucose in order to function properly. There's three main types of carbohydrates, sugars, starches, and fibers. And then I have a little note there at the bottom. This is four calories per gram. So as we go through each of these ma- uh, macronutrients, you're going to notice how many calories you get per gram for each of these two. 
people are so afraid of carbs, so afraid of carbs still. Like this should have been, <laughs> this should have been nixed a long, long time ago. You need carbs. There's, there's just like, like this slide says right here, you need them to function. Your brain needs it. You need sugar. You need fiber. You need those starches. Those things make your body function correctly. There is nothing wrong with those things, right? That again, diet culture makes you think that, you know, cane sugar is horrible for you and you shouldn't be eating it and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's not the best choice in the world, but you still need sugar. <laughs> you know, you still need those things. Get yourself some fruit. You know, I have, I have a banana every morning for breakfast, you know, things like that. That's where you can get your sugars in natural sugars, things that are, again, that are not processed. Going back to, you want your macronutrient to be your whole food, your nutrient that you can get. Like I always tell people when you're going to the grocery store, stay on the outer perimeter of the grocery store. When you're, when you're shopping, everything on the outer perimeter is going to be fresh produce. Um, you know, your meats, your, your, your fruits, your vegetables, all those kinds of things. Anything that's in the center of the grocery store is all your boxed, canned, processed foods, right? So you yes. can get sugars and you can get your carbs and all those kinds of things on the outer perimeter of that grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, I think with carbs too, you know, people are so, just like you said, afraid of the carbohydrates and think they're the devil and things like that. And I think that's that's very much a diet culture thing. And, you know, something that I explain to clients to kind of bring this full circle is you think of somebody who is uh, very low, low carb diet, anorexic, things like that. What do these women tend to 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 see? They tend to see the, uh, loss of period, uh, changes in their bone density and things like that. And the reason is your body needs energy in order to do all of the things that we think about, right? Train, mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. brain, et cetera. But what about the things that are going on internally that we don't even think about? Our mm -hmm. immune system, our menstrual cycle support, um, all uh, uh respiratory, all of those things need energy as well. So when your body is lacking the carbohydrates or the energy that's needed internally, it has to then pick and choose where it's going to give those limited calories to. Mm -hmm. And most of the time that's going to go to your brain and your heart because we absolutely need those in order to survive. So yep. what other begin to shut down because it has that limited en energy? Most of the time for, for women, it goes to the menstrual cycle. Is it important? Yes. Is it needed to survive? Absolutely not. So we'll shut that system down. So a lot of the times when girls are coming to me and they have amnuria, a lot of it's from just under eating and overtraining at that point. And not even overtraining in terms of like intensity and things like that. It's overtraining because of the lack of energy that they're giving Correct. their body and the body can't keep up with it. So carbs are not the devil. And we're, we can get into a deeper level on this about how carbs, you know, are metabolized in the body and how it's utilized. And that's maybe something we could talk about in the future in future ones about how it, how it does it actually get processed to the body and why it's so important to have carbohydrates in the diet. Mm -hmm. And everybody's different here. Some people like a little bit of a higher carb diet, lower fat. Some people thrive on lower fat and um, higher fat, lower carb. But I would go back to also how they're training and how they're moving because yes. carbs are metabolized very fast. Fats mm -hmm. are very slow to, to metabolize. So those are, those are all the deeper things that, that a coach gets into with the client and the athlete with their intake form and what their goals are and things like that. But yes, carbs are extremely important for the internal systems just as much as everything else that you think about that you need mm -hmm. energy for as well. Yeah. And that brings up a good point too. Um, I was just talking to a client the other day. She was talking about how her workouts were suffering and things like that. I'm like, well, I can't push you harder on your workouts because you're not eating enough. If you're not eating enough for just for your body to function normally day to day, your workouts aren't going to be anything. You know what I mean? You, I, I can't push you harder on your workouts. I can't fix the, these things because you're not eating enough just for your body to function daily. Yeah. You know, the, 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 and like you said, it goes, it goes into those, those essential places versus working for you. Um, and then I also want to mention, cause I just realized now that I've got the screen share up, I know it says my, I'm screen, I'm sharing my screen and it's right over top of the four calories per gram. Yeah. <laughs> So yep. I can't fix that at the moment. Well, what I'll do is I'll put that and I'll put each calorie per gram um, measurement into the de description box here in the, in the um, <laughs> and it's pretty yeah, simple to remember video. for every one gram of carb, you're getting four calories. Same mm -hmm. thing with protein for yep. every one gram, you get four calories and fats is double for every one gram, you yield nine calories. So that's just yep. an easy way to think about it. And that's how you get your total calories that you're consuming, right? right? So if you tell someone I'm on an 1800 calorie diet, how do you get that, that, that measurement? How do you get mm -hmm. to that? 
it's because right. if you come up with the amount of carbs that you're consuming in grams. Let's say it's 50, then you times that by four, and then you get that X amount of calories. And then you mm-hmm. add those up for your protein and your fat, and that's how you get your total calories consumed for the day. Right. And I and we're gonna go into a little bit of a macro split later, but also since we're since we're talking about this right now, that's why a lot of people tend to go towards a higher carb diet versus a, a higher fat diet because you have more volume of carbs versus you do fats per gram of and per calorie, that kind of thing. So if you think four grams of carbs versus nine grams of fat, that's a that's a much higher volume, double the volume, right? So it keeps you fuller longer. That's why carbs are great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, while fats will keep you satiated and things like that, it's not a lot of food, you know. Right. You, you not a lot of volume. Of, right. You've all seen the um the like the memes of like the peanut butter. This is one serving of peanut butter. You know what I mean? So like that's that's what we're talking about here. Volume of food. You can get a whole lot more volume with carbs, especially if we're talking like vegetables and things like that, because vegetables have a, have a lot of water content and things like that too. So you can get a whole lot more. You feel fuller by having more carbs versus fat. So that's just a little yeah. little side note that we're talking about there, since we were talking about the breakdown. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go to fats. Okay, so we're on fats now. So. Nine, uh, nine calories per gram. Obviously, we just mentioned that. So it's fat allows you to store energy, cushions, organs, makes certain hormones, absorb fat, soluble vitamins, and helps with cell membrane integrity. Um, there are three types of fats, trans fat, saturated fat, and unsaturated fat. Um, and the, we were just talking about this. A lot of times with the fats, it's it's more about just the like the brain function, the hormonal function. Like we talk about this all the time. When girls go on these these low fat diets for prep, it's a really, really bad recipe for hormonal health. Um, and that's what we're talking about, losing the periods and things like that too. So you, you really should not be dropping your fat under, um, you know, what is it, 30 grams of, of, of fat, 20 grams of fat for a, peer, a, a longer period of time. If it's like a couple of weeks, it's not a big deal if it's a couple of weeks. But if you're going low, low, low for a long, long time, it's bad. It's not good. It's not good for anything. You start looking, not only do you, do you, does your internal health suffer, but you got to remember like your skin is your largest organ on your body and you're going to start looking like you are malnourished. Um, if you see somebody that's, impre- I see this a lot, um, when girls are like in these Facebook groups and things like that, and they're questioning their prep protocols with their, with their, um, with their coach and they're asking about this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, what I can see from just looking at you is your skin looks yellow. You look sallow, you know, your hair looks really brittle. You're, you know, you just don't look healthy. That to me is an indicator that person is not getting enough fat in their diet. Again, going back to you, a lot of people have villainized carbs. A lot of people also villainize fat, the low fat diet craze. I mean, you know, we need fat. Fat is a good thing, especially as females. We really, really, really need fat. You know, um, I don't do particularly well on very high amounts of fat just because that's just me. That's just how I am. But I also don't do well on low amounts of fat either. <laughs> so again, there's, there's, there's a balance there. And, and some people love the keto thing. I don't like the keto thing personally. Um, but you know, if that, if that, work, if that works for you, cool, but it's just not my thing. Um, so I think, again, going back to with the fat, there's a, there's a balance there with that too. Yeah. And I th- I don't like to get under 30% of body weight for, for fats, but there are yeah. preps where we have to, you know, 25, 25 is like, mm-hmm. we don't want to be here too long, but yeah. sometimes we have to, you know? Yeah. Um, but yes, fats are extremely important, especially in a hormonal phase, right? Like post-show, like I try to get my girl's fats up as soon as I can, you know, especially if they had amnuria during prep or loss of cycle. So, mm-hmm. but apart from that, you know, in bodybuilding, if we're taking just the bodybuilding aspect now, again, we talk about how carbs are metabolized and how fats are metabolized. With bodybuilding, we need quick energy, right? Yeah. So you do, yeah, you do yeah. a set, you, do, you know, eight to 12 reps, whatever the case is, and then you rest and you're trying to recoup those energy levels. And you do another set of eight to 12 reps. Carbs are the better source for that because they're broken right. down a lot faster. Yeah. Where fats, it takes, let's say, double or triple the amount of time to metabolize and yield energy than it does a carbohydrate. Now, mm-hmm. where can a higher fat diet for an athlete be, be appropriate? A marathon runner, right? Yeah. They're running really, really long times, um, you know, one hour, three hours, whatever. The half marathons go for, what, sometimes eight hours. That's yes, where fats are, are needed. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's just, shit. yeah, no thanks. I'm not, like I, you guys know, I'm not running unless I'm being chased, but yeah. 
but that's where you start to think about, okay, so I need to fuel my body correctly for the activity that I'm trying to achieve, right? Um, so while fats take longer to metabolize, when they do metabolize, they do yield more energy. It just takes a longer, consistent energy expenditure to get there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in my marathon runners, when I used to train like like athletes back then, not bodybuilding, but, you know, soccer players, things like that, they would be on a little bit of a higher fat diet than compared to their carb ratio because they needed that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's just, you know, thinking about kind of how it, it's not just you, okay, calories in, cool. Like it's actually what's going on internally when you start to ingest those foods yes. and how it's helping yield your body. A lot of clients come to me and they're on these higher fat diets and they feel lethargic and bogged okay. down and they don't understand why. And then we just simply bring the fats down and bring the carbohydrates up and the same caloric intake and they feel so much better because now their body's actually utilizing the carbohydrates and not just kind of storing or hanging out with the fats. It's just making them feel lethargic and bogged yeah. down because they're not able to fully metabolize that fats with the energy expenditure that they're using. Yeah. And I'll also say this depends on, on the person too. Sometimes men do better with higher fat diets too than women. You know, those things, those things matter as well. And also like you were saying, nutrient timing. I mean, you don't want to do fats right after your workout. You want carbs to go boom into your bloodstream, right? Immediately. So again, that's going a little bit deeper into it, but the food timing and things like that makes a difference too. Like you were saying, I mean, like I said, Fuck that shit when it comes to marathon running, but it makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it makes they sense. need carbs too, though, the goo packs. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> All right. So then we have protein, which is, you know, as us for us as bodybuilders, this is a big, big deal, right? So um, protein allows your body to grow, build and repair tissues and protect lean mat body mass. Um, protein is compromised composed <laughs> of amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. There are two types of amino acids, not essential and essential. Um, again, going back to there's four calories per gram. Um, protein is essential if you want to build muscle, essential, essential, essential. Um, and when I look over like a new client's diet, most of the time they're under eating on protein. That's, that's where we're seeing um, they need to just bump it up. I mean, you really... You almost can't overdo protein. I mean, you can, but you almost can't. Um, <clears throat> the more that you have, the more it's going to feed your tissue. Um, and again, going back to we'll kind of do a, a, a macro split and stuff like that too. But in general, you know, four to, I tell people four to six ounces of, of protein or whatever it is per meal that you're eating tends to be a, a good amount. Um, and I think a lot of times people just, that's the hardest thing to grab. I think it's the hardest thing to grab and go. Like you could grab a piece of fruit, you can grab a piece of bread, you can grab, you know, peanut butter or nuts or whatever. You can grab those at the, at the, I, I always say like the, like when you're going to the, um, uh, gas station, like you can't go into the gas station and grab protein. Like you can't grab a chicken breast. <laughs> At some season. of them, you can now. I'm actually impressed. I'm like, oh, this is true. Okay. Some of them are getting up with the times. I will say that. But you're Wawa. Just your Shout out there Wawa. you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, it's easy to grab something that has a ton of fat. It's easy to grab something that has a ton of carbs. It's not easy to grab something with protein. Just as a, just something that I do if I'm like really pressed, I'll grab beef, like beef jerky or turkey jerky or something like that when I'm in a gas station. It works. It's protein. You know, uh, a lot of sodium, but at least it's protein. Uh, so. That's the one I feel like people in general tend to under eat the most. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, people will start with me and, you know, we do a three-day food log and always that's what I see, you know, and, and it, again, it's, you know, just go with the basics of bodybuilding or if you're just trying to just, you know, be a lifestyle client and, and gain muscle. Protein is the smallest and first thing that you can do to start your journey, you know, is just start with a protein goal and protein is so just like you said, essential to build muscle. You know, you think about what you do in the gym, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're working out in the gym, you're literally breaking that muscle fiber down. And after your workout, you're giving body, your body, the carbohydrates to fuel the recovery process. And recovery doesn't just mean, Oh, I don't want to be sore. It means that it's going to start working on those fibers that you just broke to re-sew them back yeah. together and build the bigger muscle. But protein mm -hmm. needs to be there as well to get that amino acid in there to help build the, build the muscle, right? Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and muscle. Um, right. Then you go into the two types of amino acids are non-essential and essential. And what that means is non-essential amino acids are the um, amino acids that your body can make for itself 
internally to, to build muscle. Essential amino acids, there's four of them, is the amino acids that are needed to build muscle, but your body cannot make it for itself. So it has to come from the diet or supplements. So this is where you start to see the supplement essential amino acids, EAAs or BCAAs. That's where we're taking those intra-workout or around your workout to now give your body those four essential amino acids that it can't make for itself to help with that recovery process and to build muscle. So that's what those two types mean and the why behind them. Yep. And so at the end of the day, if you're looking for something to snack on, grab a chicken breast. (laughs) Beef jerky stick. (laughs) Yeah. Right. For real. Like there's some really good ones out there too. There's like ostrich ones. There's like, there's lots of them that have very little fat. Now that's the other thing too. Um, I tend to think having thing, protein sources on hand that are lower in fat are great because you can fit them into your macros uh, a lot easier. Like I do the Greek yogurt thing. I have Greek yeah. yogurt every day. I do Greek yogurt for my breakfast. You know, um, egg, egg whites, you know, egg whites are great. I personally, this is tangent, but I can, personally can't digest egg whites that are pasteurized and stuff like that. So I just don't do those, but those are great to have on hand if you can. Um, chicken is relatively low in fat. You know, fish is, re- is relatively low in fat. White fish is relatively low in fat, that kind of thing. So when you've got those kinds of things on hand, you can fit them into your macros a whole lot easier. So just always have it. You know, I always, always, always have yogurt, um, the Greek yogurt in my in my refrigerator, because I know if I'm running low uh, on my macros otherwise, and I need to fit more protein in, I can go and grab that yogurt and I can fit it in pretty easily. You know, same thing if you've got, you know, fish or, you know, if you like, um, you know, if you like, um, like shrimp and things like that too. Again, really, really low fat. Find stuff that has mostly protein and very little fat and you can fit it into your macros to make it work. So Yeah. And just like fats, protein is very satiating. So yep. For some clients, when you're starting to work on a protein intake and you're going from very, very little to mm-hmm. moderate to high, it's hard because you feel mm-hmm. so full. Um, that's where protein shakes and the protein bars are great supplements. Now, should you be doing a protein shake for every meal? No, absolutely not. The way to get your body kind of prepped and primed for uh, the ability to process that amount of protein is to slowly increase that volume of protein so that it gets used to it. But that's where you can utilize a shake and, and things yep. like that. Now, we mm-hmm. go to the opposite. I have clients that check in with me and they're like, gosh, Jordan, I'm just so fam- uh, I'm famished. I'm hungry. I, I don't feel like I have energy. I go into their MyFitnessPal and they're doing two or three shakes a day. And I'm like, well, if you're yeah. hungry, what's your liquid protein for a animal food. protein? You know, food, mm-hmm. volume, actually yep. give your body something to work on and metabolize and satiate you. Um, right. So you feel like you're in that boat where like you're, you know, you're doing two to three protein shakes a day, but still hungry, try to break one of those into uh, an animal protein. And then eventually yeah. maybe you do no, to- no protein shakes. I used to have yeah. to do protein shakes all the time. Now I would rather much eat my food than, yeah. than drink my food. Um, but it took me some time to get there. So that's also yeah. something you can think about as well. Well, that's something I, I never understood. Like there's a lot of coaches that put their clients onto protein shakes for prep. And I'm like, how? I'm like, you have so little, yeah, I'm like, you have so little, little calories to begin with. I'm like, why do you want to drink your calories? Like I want to eat as much as I can. I utilize the protein powders and things like that when I'm in off season, because I need to get more food in, you know, and I just got to, I just got to get it in. You know what I mean? And like you said, I'm like, it's, it's, it's a good way to get it in, but it's not satiating. It's easier to, to digest and just go, go with it. You're like, okay, we're good to go. At least we got that meal in, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't no. love protein bars because they're not Neither. filling, but you know, like I went dress shopping with my friend on Tuesday and I was gone from the house for six hours. I had a protein bar on me just yeah. to keep I'm hungry. I didn't have to end yep. up using it, but those are the the plate things that I have just in case, you know? That's right. So yeah. same thing. I've always got protein bars in my bag, bag always because I, you know, I'm at shows all the time and I'm at the, I was at the Arnold this past weekend. I'm sitting there in the audience for hours. I'm like, okay, I can just pull out my protein bar. I'm good to go. It's like I'm mealing. You know what I mean? And I'm not freaking starving. And that's a healthy either. snack that you can reach for as well. Right. Versus- through it. Now I'm just going to go eat off plan at this restaurant. No, just have okay. something with you. And I have like anxiety about getting hungry. So I always have like healthy food too. in case <laughs> the, most of the time I don't need it, but it's just, it helps that fear. So <laughs> and I, and I'm that, I'm that person. My husband knows, like I, I get hangry. You know what I mean? I'm like, if, if I'm getting hungry, you, you've got about 20 minutes to put food in me. <laughs> Because otherwise exactly. I'm going to turn into a raging bitch until I get food. It just is what yeah. it is. You can always tell when I'm getting hungry. You can always tell. I'm like, I'm so short. I'm like, no. Even like That's where I, I just go, go internal. Because if I start yeah. talking, I'm going to be nasty. Yeah. We go to shows and stuff and I'll have like a, like we were at the ballet and I had a freaking protein bar in my purse and pulled it out because I was hungry. <laughs> that would be me. 
can't, that would, can't do this. I got to like, eat something. <laughs> totally be me. <laughs> so anyway, there's, there's, your, there's your options for protein. Um, and lastly, on these macros, we have alcohol. So alcohol is often considered the fourth macronutrient. It's separate from protein, carbs, and fats. The human body lacks the ability to store meaningful quantities of alcohol. When levels of alcohol exceed certain levels, it can be classified as a toxin. This, and for other metabolic reasons, the human body preferentially, preferentially pref, I can't talk, preferentially <laughs> oxidizes alcohol over other, <laughs> over other macronutrients, such as protein, carbs, and fats. This effectively can reduce the body's ability to utilize, store, and body utilize stored body fat for energy over short periods of time. And again, you have seven calories per gram for alcohol. So alcohol is its own macronutrient. You do have to track it when you drink it. <laughs> yeah. There's apps. There are apps that you can actually download that t- that you plug in the alcohol content or whatever it is that you're actually doing, and it will give you what your macros are and how to log it. I log my alcohol as either carbs or fat. Um, you know, it's not protein. So, <laughs> you know, but you log it as either carbs or fat. So if you've got extra fat at the end of the day or you got extra carbs at the end of the day, you want to go out and have a drink with your husband or something like that, cool. But you do have to log to it. To track it, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think the two main bullet points here, number one, that it, it cannot be used, right? Mm -hmm. So we think about carbs and fats and protein, and we just talked about how they're used in the body. Alcohol cannot be used as an energy source, and it certainly doesn't let us gain muscle, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing to think about is, yes, it's a toxin, but what are we also doing most of the time when we're drinking alcohol? We're eating, right? So because (laughs) making that right, you're usually eating like more high fat foods and you're out to dinner and things like that. So what does the body do now when it's signaling, okay, we have a toxin in our body, but we also Mm -hmm. have food that we need to digest, right? It's going to shift to, we need to metabolize the toxin first because this is harmful to get it out of the body. So it tends to store now the food that we're eating at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a simple way to think about it. So people are, you know, that drink a lot, that's kind of why they gain excess body fat as well. It's it's because number one, they're drinking in excess and the body can't kind of keep up with the metabolism of the alcohol, but also they're usually eating with that too. And they're just putting on body fat. So you know, in a contest prep setting, this is why alcohol is is not okay, right? Like we be drinking alcohol is an inflammatory marker. It just tends to cause havoc on the body. That's why after a night of drinking, you know, your fingers are swelling a little bit. Face looks like it's a little bit swollen. You just overall don't feel good. You have the brain fog, things like that. Um, so listen, a couple drinks here and there, no problem. No problem. Yeah. As long as it's not, you know, something out of control. Um, but if you're trying to stay on track in terms of your nutrition and intake and calorie count, it's not just because it's liquid and clear and an alcohol, it doesn't count. It does. And it makes yeah. a big difference in, in, in terms of your physique and metabolism and your caloric intake each week. Yep. And I, and I've talked about this several times, like when I go out for a free meal or something like that, I'll have alcohol or a dessert. I don't do both because of the reasons you Mm. just mentioned, because your body won't process it. You know what I mean? But again, I go back to what I just did this weekend at the Arnold. I drank, you know, at the bar with the girls and stuff, but my meals were healthy. They were chicken breast and, and salad, you know, that kind of thing. Like they weren't burgers and fries. You know, I did, I did have a burger and fry one night. I will, I will, I will do that. So <laughs> there's that, but you know, yeah. there's again, going back to the balance thing, like there's nothing saying you can't have both, but just make good, good decisions on Absolutely. what, you're going to eat you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, if you're going to have the alcohol, cool, just don't eat the dessert with it. You know what I mean? Whatever it might be that, that helps to keep you in a good spot and keep you progressing, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'm a big, also when you, when you're, when you're drinking alcohol, the easiest way to figure out the harmful effects that it has on your body is if you have a sleep score, look at your sleep score. The next Always day. down. It's terrible. Always. It's horrible. Yep. So what alcohol will do is it'll make you pass out, but it raises your blood temperature, all this kind of stuff. So you, you're breathing heavy, all those kinds of things when you're sleeping. So you're not getting restful sleep at all. I don't yeah. know about you, but like if I drink, I don't sleep a full night through. I will definitely wake up at least a couple of times throughout the night. Oh. Oh, definitely. Because I start to get, just like you said, the increased heart rate and then like the increased sweat rate and things like that because your your metabolism's on fire and it's trying, that's why you get like the heat sensation as well because your body can metabolize all the extra food you just had, the alcohol, et cetera. And it's just kind of on overdrive. So that's, it affects your sleep as well. So again, it just has like this 
this cyclic effect of everything internally. So again, alcohol is just not bad. Just make good choices, you know, and yes. try to keep it minimum. And sometimes too, where people go wrong in, in terms of alcohol too, is like the mixers. Like, so just be yeah. mindful of the type of alcohol you're drinking and what you're also then putting into it. Right. Cause the alcohol right. has calories, but so does the mixers and things like that. That's the sugar and all of that. Yep. Yeah. Now my, my thing is I either do red wine or I do vodka soda. That's it. Red I do red wine or I do dirty martinis. There you go. There you go. Except for when I was out there for the Super Bowl and I had martinis. With, or not martinis, margaritas. Margaritas. <laughs> I love margaritas too. Margaritas Those are usually too. my tip too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, everyone's, again, every once in a while, balance. Balance. It's all balance. balance. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So there's that. Um so we, we've talked, we have gone through this as we've gone through. So what does each macro and the body do and why is it important? So we talked about that as we went. Now with macro splits, I think we hold this for next time. Because okay. We definitely want, talked enough about this, but this is what we're- But this is a little doing. view of what we're going to get into yep, for all of you. We're going to go into this a little bit more in depth. And for those of you that are listening, if you want to send us your macro split, tell us what you're eating. Tell us what your percentages are. Um, or any questions. What, yeah. And tell us what your goal is too with your, with your macro split. Some of you guys may be trying to go into contest prep. Some of you may be trying to build muscle. Some of you may be just trying to maintain whatever it may be. So when we come back for our next macro topic, we'll talk about the ideal splits and things like that. Cool. And for those of you tracking macros that aren't sure maybe what your macro split is in the same area that we told you guys about where to find your micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the top of your MyFitnessPal and click your, your uh, calories or your macros that you see at the top, it'll take you to the micro screen. There's also different screens up at the top that you can click on and it will show you eventually a circle with your percentages of each macro that you're consuming. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. So we will work on that for next week. Now, we have some hot button topics to talk about. We have some things. We have some things that happened this week. <laughs> so, um, oh, buckle up. No, <laughs> there's, there's some things. There's some things to talk about. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about is um, the prize money bump for the Arnold Classic. So, anybody that watched the live stream or that was there in person at the Arnold, you saw this happen. Um, you saw Arnold get on the mic and say that he is bumping up the prize money for the open men to $500,000 for the winner, which is a hundred thousand dollars more than what the Olympia actually offers, which is not, not done. <laughs> it's just not, it's not, not usually done. Right. So the backstory on this is that I, I believe that, um, uh, allegedly, again, I don't know the full, don't know if this is ex exactly correct, but this is what I've heard that um, Arnold did ask to be able to bump up the prize money. They didn't give him a yes or no, and he just took the bull by the horns and got on the mic and was like, We're doing this. So um, the following day after the show, they had the superstar seminar. Um, they bring in all the champions, they bring in um, Arnold and, and some of the previous winners and things like that. And Arnold's whole shtick in doing this was he's like, the reason I'm doing this, he's like, is because I want the Olympia to step up too. So for those of you that don't know, the Olympia is supposed to have the highest prize money of all of the um, shows. Arnold is considered a promoter, right? Um, the Olympia is its own entity. Arnold is a promoter for the IFBB. Um, that's why a lot of people, there was a lot of uproar about, okay, why is he upping the prize money for the men? and not including some of the other divisions that have been have been taken out because he's a promoter and he can choose whichever divisions he wants it can be up to his own discretion whatever reason he has he gets to choose which divisions he wants the olympia has all of them period just has all of them um so there's just a different subset different different types of rules for each type of show so at the end of the day, um, what Arnold was doing is he was trying to basically say, okay, Olympia, it's time for you to step up your game and increase the prize money too, right? So instead of being upset, because this is what bothered me, um, you know, everybody was upset online about the fact that Arnold is giving this much money to the open men. Understand that the driving force behind it was that he wants the Olympia and he wants everybody else to step their prize money up too. Right. He feels like the sport should be better than and higher and raised up and all this kind of stuff. So he's doing his part to do that. That was his driving force behind it. Now, I also go back to for those of you that paid attention to um, the show itself, Jay Cutler, uh, he was given the Lifetime Achievement Award 
And the biggest thank you that he gave while he was on that stage was to Ronnie Coleman. He thanked Ronnie Coleman for always pushing him because if it wasn't for Ronnie Coleman, Jay wouldn't have been who he was. He yes. wouldn't have pushed harder. He wouldn't have, he like Jay said, he's like, I thrive being number two. I thrive being the underdog. Right. So he thanked Ronnie Coleman over and over and over again for being that person that pushed him to be the best. Right. So the way I look at this is I look at Arnold is pushing the Olympia and pushing the IFBB to be better, which I think is a good thing. Absolutely. We all need competition. We all need competition. We all need people to push us harder. Otherwise, we just stay stagnant. We just stay where we are. We don't do we don't do anything if we don't have anybody pushing us. You know, that's that's why we thrive as competitors. We want to be better than the next person that got on stage. You know what I mean? So in general, I think it's a great thing. You know, I'm not sitting here going to be like mad that he didn't give the bikini girls more money. I'm like, just because somebody else gets something good doesn't take away from what you have. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Like, I'm, I don't really think about that. I don't know if it's because I'm just not there or whatever it yeah, is, but, yeah. you know, I just, um, I'm just grateful. You know, I, at the end of the day, I'm just grateful to be a part of the yeah. sport. And if I ever get to that point, great. You know, I'm grateful to, for, to win a hundred dollars. I'm grateful to win a thousand. <laughs> right? yeah. You know, it's an expensive hobby. I'll take anything I can get, but, um, you know, I think more, more of it is that people are upset in the way that he did it, you know, but it's typical Arnold way. He's going to do right, it the way Arnold. he does. That's Arnold, that's right. you know, it's, he, he, it's his, it's his show. He runs, you know, he runs the show. It's his world. We live in it. So yep. I, I think it's great. You know, I, I agree. I, I don't get jealous of anyone. If anybody's doing better than me, I use it as fuel and motivation and there's plenty mm -hmm. of success to go around. We talk about that all the time. It just keeps allowing me to step up and be better, to be honest, if I was the best in the world time and time and time and time and time again, and there was no one else that was coming, you would get boring. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I would almost rather be in the, in the second place spot. I know that's weird, but, um, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, you know, this, this sport, I don't think is going anywhere for a long time. So it's yeah. just you know, got to continue to elevate together. And if no one's, you know, chasing your chill to push you harder, it's going to get boring after a while. So yep. we'll see how it all shakes out, but it was, uh, that was a way to end a show to say the least. Right. I know it was, it was, it was, it, it's just funny, you know, I was in the audience. It's just funny just watching people's faces, just like their mouths drop open, like, uh, what were the judges what? were the judges yeah, sitting still the judges there right from, so i was in the media media pit the judges yeah. were right there in, the, yeah. in, in front of me and everybody was just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure the ifbb had a call on monday about that one <laughs> i know i know i was like but it's you know the, the thing about it too is like they always say that uh there's no such thing as bad publicity, you know what I mean? So this gets people talking, you know, and, and going back to the always being pushed to be better. Like I say this all the time. I'm one of the few women in the sport. Like I sat there in the media pit today, that, that night. I was the only woman covering bodybuilding. I was the only one. Everybody else was, it was all men covering, this, men. covering the show. Yeah. So for me, that's always a driving force for me because I'm like, I want to lift us up. I want us to be better. I want the women to be better and all those kind of things. So I'm always on my toes because of that, you know? So I, I, I like that. I like competitive nature. I've always been like that. I've always, I thrive in challenges. I thrive in the competition. Even if I don't win, it still pushes me to be better. And that's a win for me. You know, that's I mean? what, that's when you, right. like, you know, that's when you're like, okay, cool. That wasn't my best today. Why not? And let's get yeah. back to the running board. Yeah, absolutely. That's the exciting part. So for me, it's exciting. You know, when you go back and you look at like the 80s and 90s and stuff, you know, bodybuilding was on ESPN and it was on all these big, you know, network show like networks and things like that. I want that again. You know what I mean? I want to see this sport evolve. You know, like I, I think it can be so much bigger than what it is. You know, yeah. like like we talked about this too. I just talked about Jay Cutler. Most people outside of the bodybuilding world don't even know who he is, and he's one of the biggest stars That's in amazing. our sport. You yeah. know, he's one of the biggest stars in our sport. People don't know who he is. You know, we say Jay Cutler and they think of the the, the football player, right? Yeah. Um, Chicago or whatever, the, the Bears or whatever the hell. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> like, go I know sports. Jay Cutler. <laughs> right. <laughs> go sports. <laughs> I know Jay Cutler from bodybuilding. I don't know Jay Cutler from football. Jay Cutler from football. <laughs> right? So, I think, um, did you, did you get an email about them trying to start a documentary for the Olympia this year? I saw that. I saw it. I didn't get an email. I, I might've, I didn't check. I saw I, that. I'm not sure if it's email. Now I can't remember where I saw it. I'll have to try to pull that I up. I posted I, it on Facebook. Okay. I want to say I that. Tim Gardner posted it. 
Yeah, I want to say that they're putting something together this year yeah. to follow athletes going into the Olympia and behind the stage at the Olympia. So that, yeah. that sounds really cool. Really, Absolutely. really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. I think they more. should have more of that, more documentaries, more like Netflix yeah. type shows. I think Aaron Banks was trying to start something like that with ESPN. I'm not sure what happened with that. I know they were, they were talking about it a year ago, but like, I feel like bodybuilding should be more exposed in the world. Right. And you know, people are so curious about us and our lifestyles and what we do. I think, I think it would be interesting and it would also kind of take away all the negative connotation that comes from the sport because, you know, it's you'll see people actually what they do day in and day out and realize that we do work really hard and it's not yep. just an accident. We all show up jacked in 10% body fat on stage. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's I, definitely I'll have not to by try accident. to find that wherever <laughs> Definitely not by accident. I'm going to do this on purpose, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Which brings us to our next hot button topic, because if this was to get become more mainstream, people would understand why this just happened. <laughs> so um, for those of you that are out of the loop on this whole situation, Greg Doucette is a big time YouTuber, big time influencer. Um, he was there at the Arnold this past weekend. Um, he was a CPA judge. He is not anymore. This is where C the problem came in. What CPA, just so people know? Yes, we're going to go into that. So CPA oh. is the Canadian Physique Alliance, okay? So they are the NPC of Canada. So everybody that goes through the CPA, just like they go through the NPC here, they feed into the IFPB. So we've got the NPC here in the U.S. They got the CPA in Canada. And if you win your pro card in Canada, you are a IFPB pro. So it's essentially like he was a he was a judge here in the NPC, but he, just in Canada, basically, right? So essentially, what happened was after finals on Saturday, he went on a big rant in his um, hotel room at the Arnold, um, talking about bikini girls in a very um, disgusting light. I'll just put it that way: very disgusting light. Um, now. This is probably how 99% of men talk in the locker rooms. You know, I'm not, you know, we're not oblivious to this. We understand that this kind of thing happens, get it, you know, but it should not happen from somebody who goes onto their YouTube and says, and I'm a judge. That one line right there, that one line right there was the problem. Blew it out of the water. Yep. Correct. Um, in general, nobody really pays attention as far as us females. We don't pay attention to Greg Doucette. We don't care. <laughs> Just don't. Uh, but when you come out and portray yourself to be a judge when you're not, that's where there's an issue. Okay. Especially with the way he was saying things and especially how he was saying things and how he could think that this was a good thing and how he was talking about women is just beyond me. I don't know how he could think that that was a good thing. So this got attention from a lot of women. We all spoke out and the CPA and including Tyler Manning did too. Tyler Manning came and responded to people and responded to emails, everything that came in, um, you know, basically tell it saying that Greg is not, is not a judge. So I have the um, announcement here from the CPA. So I'm going to read it for you guys so you can see it. Okay. So this is up on their Instagram. You can go see it right now. It's the Canadian Physique Alliance. And it says the Canadian Physique Alliance, working under the umbrella of the NPC, places great importance on the judges who play a crucial role in ensuring the credibility and professionalism of the sport of bodybuilding. It is essential for judges to uphold high standards to ensure fair competition and maintain the trust of athletes and fans alike. In response to the situation involving former CPA judge Greg Doucette, it's important to note that he no longer holds a position as a regional judge for the CPA. Following his unprofessional conduct in using the credibility of judging system for his own personal gain, he was removed from any future judging opportunities within the organization in June of 2023. He continued, his continued actions with his recent rants are further proof that his removal was warranted as they undermine the integrity of the sport and compromise the fairness of competitions. It is crucial for judges to remain professional, impartial, and dedicated to upholding the values of their sport without personal gain or bias. 
Moving forward, the CPA, NPC, and IFBB Pro League remains committed to upholding the highest standards with professionalism and integrity within the sport of bodybuilding by ensuring that only qualified and ethical individuals serve as judges. The organization can continue to promote fair competitions and maintain the trust of all those involved in the sport. It is through the dedication and integrity of judges that the sport can thrive and provide a platform for athletes to showcase their hard work and talent. And this is by Ron Hache, who is the president of the Canadian Physique Alliance and pro league judge. So the fact, the fact that the, the CPA actually came out and made a public statement shows you just how bad this was, right? Like the, again, the things that he said, if I was, if I was just sitting, if I was just sitting around listening to him talk, I would think he was a disgusting person. Just, I would think he was a disgusting person. Um, over sexualizing women it came across as that concept of well she deserved it because she was wearing the short skirt that's what it came across right and y'all know what i'm talking about when i say that right it was bad so just as a normal human being it's a creep it's creep behavior just it's creep behavior um anybody that says me different y'all got to check yourselves that's that's the first thing as a judge that should never come out of a person's mouth and the fact that he kept saying, this is what, how we judge it. This is how we judge it. Bro, you do realize that the head judge at the Olympia is a female, right? <laughs> Wacky. You know, like, I just, I just don't understand where you can think that this is how the judges think. Like, it, yeah. I don't get it, you know? Well, and some of the things he was, you know, saying too, is just almost attacking women as a whole, you know, right. like some of the things he was referring to that, bikini athletes do or things that women do in general in general yep so it was, it was it, he was talking very specifically but it was also very generalized to mm -hmm. females in general and yeah and just to your point you know like he was talking about the judges and how they judge it and things like that and portraying himself as one of those and right one of the mm -hmm. our, our uh, head female judge in the bikini division is a female is a female right. so yeah so that alone should tell you that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That alone. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I just, I've, I've heard these comments for years. You know, I think we all have, you know what I mean? And it's like, we try so hard. You and I on this podcast, we, like those of us that talk about the criteria, Sandy goes out all the time. Becky goes out all the time. We talk about the criteria and the points and things that the judges are looking for all the time. And that quickly, this guy, just because he has a massive following, can screw the whole thing up. And I'm just like, yep. I'm like, are you kidding? And then not only that, but he doesn't come out and apologize for his words and say, Oh, you know, I really should have thought before I did this. He doubles down on it. Right. And he keeps going with it. And he's still keep, he's still going with it right now. Yep. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. We as females, we have a voice and we used it, which was very clear by the appropriate response that the CPA put out. I thought that was incredible that they did that. You, that shows you like when you know, when, when the male bodybuilders start picking it up and putting it on their YouTubes and things like that, about what's going on in the female divisions, you know, it's a problem. Yeah. Because very <laughs> rarely do they care. Right. Correct. So yeah. yeah this got a lot of attention and people were commenting and reposting and from all divisions. And they were like, yeah. this is okay. like, they like mm -hmm. bikini is a, just another representation of our sport. It is another division and it deserves the same respect, the same look. And it, um, Tyler actually came out first, I believe before this. Yeah, Tyler, so Tyler was sending, was sending replies to emails that were coming in. So, okay. you know, girls were, were emailing the, the IPB and the CPA and things like that about this, this happening. And Tyler was responding to them and telling them, uh, I think it, I actually have that screenshot too. Hold on. And like, what a, what a annoying way to end the Arnold weekend, right? You're coming home, you know, Tyler, you know, you just judged all weekend, great show, things like that. And this is what you have to deal with in your inbox on Monday, Tuesday morning. So this was a comment that I made because I copied it from the Reddit post um, and I put it onto the YouTube channel I was talking about before. Um, the CPA has stated that Greg is banned from judging. Um, April 23rd was the last show that he judged. Tyler from the IFB responded that Greg is no longer a judge for the CPA and will never judge a CPA show again. He has known this and is falsely start stating that he's a current judge. We don't tolerate this kind of behavior from any of our judges. That was from Tyler. 
Yeah. That right there is from Tyler. So yeah. again, the biggest problem was, was that he portrayed himself as a judge. If he was just some random influencer saying, this is how he felt about bikini. That's one thing. Right. But when you portray yourself as being a representative of the organization, that's wrong. That's Correct. wrong. You know, yeah. I'm sorry. You can sugarcoat it any way you want. That's wrong. Okay. Yeah. Just um, as, just as meaningful to us in the sport as impersonating a police officer or a doctor. Right. In, right. in the sport, right? Like that, yes. like when mm-hmm. somebody is a judge and they tell us that they're a judge and they're giving us feedback, like we take that as strong and true and honest. And, and so that's where that little sentence just made yep. it all the difference, you know? That's right. So. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's what I said. I sit back and I think, okay, so you just basically lied to everyone. You lied to your followers. You lied to people that that trust you, that are supposed to trust you as a coach, as an influencer, as whatever. You clearly lied. Clearly lied. So how's anybody, anybody supposed to trust you ever? I, I wouldn't. wouldn't. <laughs> I, wouldn't trust, I wouldn't trust a single word out of your mouth. And I keep going back to, there's certain, I, I talked, we talked about this before we got on and started recording today. There are certain things that I don't understand. My husband loves wrestling. Absolutely loves wrestling. He tries to explain wrestling to me all the time. I don't understand half of what he tells me, <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to sit there and go diss the sport and diss the whole thing because I don't understand it or I don't care. I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. If you yeah. don't like it, if you don't understand the criteria, if you don't understand how the judges are judging the women, shut the fuck up. How yep. hard is that? Yep. Yep. Yeah, but this is where, you know, platforms uh, give people too much of a right, I guess, to speak yeah. out, I want to say. I don't know. I know that's not yeah. the right way to say it, but it's just, it's, if you don't have nothing, just go back to this simple saying, if you have nothing nice to say, I really, do, I, I always try to put myself in the different lens in situations like this with my clients, when I'm in an argument, whatever, I try to put myself in the, in the opposite lens and I just really can't see here what the point was like what was the was point. actual point right like yeah. it, it and to me it's more going to be harmful for his platform than anything yeah. really i'm just i try to understand and i just don't see it it's it was very hurtful it was very harmful it was very degrading there was just yep. so many we don't want to go over the comments here but you it, it's all over the place yeah. so if you want to go find it it's very yep. easy um and do, do us a favor don't go watch it on his channel don't give him more more views right <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't get him more views. <laughs> and also too, like something I think about just to put another bullet point here is like, think of all the, the, the judges in the U S that we have, right. We have Becky, we have Sandy, we have Tyler, we have Etla, and none of them post ever, like yeah. very rarely, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just, just, they, you know, the, the, the great thing was that at the end of last year, Tyler started putting out those educational videos because right. people were like asking, we want more content from you. Like tell us That's a little right. bit more, but it's very structured, right? Yes. Becky, Arnold was over posted about, you know, the winners and, you know, what she saw and the one point is it's always very educational and very short. Um, so the, those are the people that we have to look up to and that matter within the sport. And that's why I'm really happy. Just like you're saying with the way that they handled it, it was Mm -hmm. done in a timely manner. Um, I love that they went very thorough in the communication of what's okay, what's not okay and what they're doing about it. And that's what we have to hold true and stick to. And I'm really, really proud of the IFBB and the CPA in this situation. I think they handled it very, very well. Absolutely. I was very, very happy with it too. I think, I think everybody was, I think everybody was because at the end of the day, here's the other thing too, like, because he does not represent the CPA or the IFBB, they didn't have any obligation to say anything. Correct. And that's where I was wondering if they were going to, Yeah, but yeah, they, did. they didn't have to. Yep, so the fact did. that they did, the fact that they did should tell you everything. Exactly. That should tell you everything. And like, remember, he was already he was already dismissed almost a year ago for the context and conduct that was similar. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And we don't know why he was banned in the first place. We don't know why. There's been rumors that con- have gone around, so we kind of have an idea. Yeah. But it could have been several other things, too. We don't know. Yeah. And the fact is, probably when that first happened, they probably kept it pretty private. And they said, listen, sure. this is not okay. This is not something that we do. Blah, blah, blah. We're done. You know? Yeah. But he continued to use the platform that he no longer had in order sure. to create authority for himself. Yeah. And that's where this whole rant became a problem. Yeah. Yep. You know, again, if it was just some dude talking to his camera in the freaking hotel room, nobody would care. Right. Yeah. You know, it happens every day. 
Yeah. The fact that you portrayed yourself as somebody of importance, somebody of re- relevant, somebody of authority, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. You can just be a douchebag and a cre- creep on your own. Cool. Cool story, bro. Good luck with that. You know? <laughs> See ya. <laughs> yeah. And you can have all your little creepy ass friends around you. That's cool too. But leave it the hell out of our sport. Yep. Yep. Bottom line. Because we are professionals, just like professionals, even amateurs. I want, you know, you are a professional. Like this is your yeah. hobby. Like we put a lot of time and attention into this sport. And um, we should, no matter what, at the end of the day, we just all need to respect each other. Yeah. You know, right. words matter. Absolutely. Words matter. Absolutely. You know? really no matter who you are, words matter, you know? So just be kind, think about what you say, how you say it, how you're putting it on your platforms. That's it. That's right. You know, and again, ask yourself the question that you just said too. What was the purpose behind that? Other than to get attention, Uh, which clearly he got attention. Clearly that worked. Yeah. Was, Was it worth it? I think he's thriving in that right now, but anyway, know, right? that's why we don't want you to go to his page. <laughs> exactly. No, go watch his YouTube. <laughs> yes. Don't do it. <laughs> yes. Don't do it. So, um, so anyway, so those, those were the fun things that happened. <laughs> Very like, fun. Okay, let's, let's start this year off with a bang, you guys. Let's start this year off with a bang. So um, let's kind of wrap this whole thing up. Um, we'll get rid of this now. So um, what do we have next? What show are you at next? Um, I am going to be in Orlando or San Diego the last week of this month. I'm not sure which one yet. Okay, cool. We have a local show here that last week too. Same thing. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I've got a few weeks at home. I've got a group posting class this weekend. Um, that kind of thing. There's the Arnold UK is coming up next week. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. when we get to that. Um, I talked about that on my live last night. Um, it's going to be an interesting Arnold, um, next week. Um, Vanya being the, the front runner going to that show, which I think is really cool. Um, I don't think anybody would have picked that out. Yeah. <laughs> into it, you know, um, it was funny because when I was walking around the, the meet and greet, you know, I did my, re- my, my preview on the whole show and I was like, these are the girls that I want to go talk to. So it just happened that the girls that I got a chance to go talk to did end up in the top five. So again, going back to, there is criteria to this. There is stuff that, that goes into the judging because if it was as Mr. Doucette, if he, if he even deserves a mister. Um, it said if it was just on who's sexiest, then I would have had to interview everybody. But I didn't. I interviewed <laughs> five girls yeah. because those were the, the girls I thought were going to be in the top five. And look what happened. There's yeah. a there's yep. criteria. So again, um, going back to- It's like you've it taken great. your judging test before. And you know Imagine that. that. So that's, that's the thing too, guys. I was a judge. I'm not anymore. So don't come for me. I'm not a judge anymore. <laughs> but I was. I was. I did judge. Um, and I went through the process. I, I actually became an actual NPC judge. Figured out I didn't like doing it as much as I like working with people. So I stopped. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but it's like I kind of know the sport a little bit. You know, it's amazing. There's an actual criteria. It's not just who's sexiest and who I want to smash. Yeah. And just so you guys know, too, the judging test is very hard. And there's multiple levels to it. It's not like a CrossFit certification where you show up to the IFBB office for four hours one day and you get your judging pass. Yeah. Pat- pat- it is a, a system, it's a process and it's, yep. it's, it, it's scored and there's multiple levels to it. So it's, it's not easy to become yes. a judge. They're, they're, they really do test you and make sure that you know what, what you're looking at. Yep. And they made a, a provisionary thing this past year uh, here in the States. I don't know about CPA if they do it that, that way or not, but if you are an active IFBB pro, you can't judge. Nope. Period. Nope. Because I said years ago that I, uh, I wanted to judge if, you know, when I was done with this and they're like, uh, well, you're an athlete now. So no, yeah. an act- coach so no and and where you eliminate the bias right if I have all my athletes on stage you know then I got to dismiss myself from the table constantly I I can't be an efficient judge so that's right yeah it used to to be like when I was judging if you were an IPB pro you could judge local level shows but you couldn't judge national or pro shows because you were judging people that you would potentially be competing against of course yeah so just just makes sense. sense Absolutely. You, know, so you have to actually retire before you can do those two levels. Now, again, this started last year. If you're an active pro, you can't judge. Right. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So. Well, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, Me honestly, too. like, I, I'm I having just, too much fun as an athlete. So I know. Well, that. and my thing is, I tell people, like, I'm too ADD. Like, I, I, I couldn't sit at the, at the chair all day long. <laughs> that was my problem when I was judging. I was like, this is just, I can't. 
I can't just sit here. Long days for them. I can't. Like, it, geez, yeah. I give them a lot of credit because I couldn't do it. I was just like, yeah. this is not, I, I have to get up and go do something. <laughs> yeah. You have to stay sharp all day long. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'd rather just, you know, work with my girls. I'll be good to go, you know? Me so. too. I'm good. I'm happy. <laughs> Um, but with that, like I said, I mean, I, th- I thought it was a really, really good Arnold. I think that um, this is setting up the, the stage for this year to be very, very good as far as competition is concerned. Across the board, like I talked about bikini last night on my live, but across the board on the on all divisions, um, except I would say wellness, which was a little bit disappointing, I'm going to be honest. Um, Francielli looked phenomenal and just blew the whole thing away. Like there was nobody even close. Nobody even yeah. close. You know, I will say I was happy because... I felt like the girls that they had in the top uh, at wellness were not huge. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we see these girls walk out on stage and they're just massive. Yeah. Um, they're still feminine. Them yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. None of them were. I agree. They were all in good shape. They all looked pretty. Like they had that pretty beautiful look. So I'm hoping like, I've always loved Lily Dawn. I think she looks great. She's on the smaller side and she ended up the first call. I think she ended up sixth, fifth or sixth. Um, but she ended up placing. So I thought that was great. You know, I, I watched her at her very true novice show type mm-hmm. back in 2020. And wow, yeah. it's been so cool to see her grow over the years. Totally awesome. She looks phenomenal. I thought Bruna looked phenomenal. It's the first time she's been on stage in a while. I really, I, I think she's beautiful. I think that's one of the best looks. Um, and, and I, I'm hoping that we see more of that coming, coming forward, you know? Um, so that was, that was encouraging. I will say that because I thought that the looks that we saw for, for, for wellness were very beautiful. Very pretty. Yes, I agree. So, I liked yeah, Franciella's uh, blue suit. I was, I love, love, love the blue suit. I, I'm, I'm yeah. a fan of the red. Of I mean, red. I love the red too, but I like the change up. It was cool to I see know. something. Yeah, hey, you got to try something different. And, yeah. um, I liked the color on her. I didn't like the back cut. The back cut was too okay. high. It was all the way up on her, on her lower back. So I was not a fan of it sitting got so it. high. If she pulled it down, it would have been better. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think it was bad. I'm just partial to the red. I'm just yeah. partial to the red. I so but her physique, I don't even know. Like, I don't, it's not this, it's not humanly possible. Like she has to be like from another planet. I don't know how she keeps improving her lower body and keeping her waistline that tight. It's I know. ridiculous. It's yep. ridiculous. Like she's it's cool phenomenal. to see. Cool to watch. Yeah. yeah she's phenomenal. a tremendous athlete. Absolutely. Yep. I was a little, Absolutely. I was a little underwhelmed with Issa. I mean, she came out and did a post and saying about how she went into it. She had a lot of issues going into the, into the show. She looked very inflamed. I mean, from the second she walked out on stage, I was like, Ooh, she's soft. I was like, I don't, I don't that stinks. Really see her. Yeah. And she was soft all that over. Stinks. It wasn't like, it wasn't like it was one spot. It was like, it wasn't like it was just her glutes and she just wasn't stressed. She just had, she had inflammation all over her body. So hopefully you know, they get that figured out. She's got plenty of time between now and the Olympia. So. Oh yeah. 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 She'll be fine. Is that as far as that's concerned? Poor girl. I, I like, she had an issue last year with an injury. You know, that's why she didn't come into yeah, it. I remember last that. Year. Yeah. It's like, that sucks, man. Like when those big shows come around where she has an opportunity to like, she could have, she could have given, you know, Francelia a run for her money if she was on point. You know what I mean? So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What are you gonna do? But um, another yeah, Arnold I, come and gone. Yeah, another one gone. Another one. It's crazy. Another one come and gone. <laughs> and we're, and now we're starting up the season again. Now season awesome. has begun. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, still just chugging away in off season. I'm sore as crap today on my glutes. That's fun times. Good. Those hip, those hip hinge squats, man. Getting ready to do those today. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah. I don't. And I said this to my che- in my check in with Jamie today. I was like, I don't know if I've ever felt something hit me as hard as those things hit me. I'm like, they're just like it's like immediately after the exercise, I'm sore and it doesn't go away. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. I have, listen, <laughs> I've I've been the um, the guinea pig for years with Drew and yeah. coming up with all these exercises. So I was doing these behind the scenes for the last two years, just trying to like figure out what's the best, blah, blah, blah. Now it's all coming out and everybody's starting to feel the exercise. Oh, now. Yeah. Pain. <laughs> well, like we talked about, so for those of you that don't know, we have coaching calls for fit body, um, you know, every Wednesday. So we have one of those yesterday and went through the dynamic stretching and stuff like that, that we're going to be implementing with all of our athletes. And, and I've been doing that since I have my assessment with Drew and it makes a huge difference as far as just being able to target the right muscle and really get in deep and get in where we want to and the intensity and all of that, that dynamics, dynamics, warm ups and stuff are huge, huge. Absolutely. So, yeah. Doing yep. phenomenal work there. Yeah. Doing phenomenal work like that. 
I'm, I'm excited. Like, like my physique looks different. Like you saw it on my reel when I was checking with Jamie in person. I mean, it, it looks better every week and it's just I'm hitting the right, hitting the right muscle groups. <laughs> Doing the work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. So it's good. All things good. Everything, how's everything going in your camp as far as your training and stuff is concerned? Good. Really good. Just chugging on, chugging on. Nothing to report chugging this on. week. Awesome. Well, this was a fun one. Um, we are, again, we're going to continue with the macros uh, mini series here. So this is the first one. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, and again, send in your macro splits if you want us to go over them next week and we'll kind of dive into macro splits and how they work and how they're beneficial and how you can change them and all those kinds of things. So we'll kind of start diving into that a little bit more. So with that, guys, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. We'll see you back here again next week for episode 20, 29. We're on 28 right now. Uh, the mystery of macros solved. We're going to solve it. We're going to solve the mystery. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully we won't have anything crazy to have to talk about next week. <laughs> hopefully it's a quiet week here. We'll see. We'll see we'll how see. they go. We'll the, see. The explainers. <laughs> yeah. And on that note. <laughs> and on that note, have a great rest of your Thursday, you guys. We'll see you next week behind the bikini. We are out. Bye.